This is part two of a four part series on object oriented languages. In this video, we look at inheritance and overriding. So let's continue with our example from the previous video. Here is a class diagram for a generic light bulb object. We have the class name. We also have four attributes that every object we instantiate from this class will be required to have. And finally, every object created from this class will have eight methods associated. If you want to recap the basics, watch part one of our four part series first. Now, of course, not every light bulb is the same. Some will be highly specialized versions of our generic light bulb class template. The light bulbs will still share all the same attributes and methods, but may require additional attributes and methods to fully describe them. Luckily, OOP provides a mechanism for this, and it's known as inheritance. Let's take a look at an example. Here we have the person class, and it has two attributes, name and address. And it has four methods, two for getting the name and address and two for setting the name and address. Now, this person object is fine, but it's very generic. With OOP, we can use inheritance to quickly and easily reuse the code from the person class and extend its attributes and methods without affecting the original code. So here's a more specific class called employee. Now the employee class is said to inherit the same attributes and methods from the person class. Each employee is a person, so they will still need all the code from the person class to get and set their name and address attributes. However, the employee class will also need to store and output each person's national insurance number. We don't need to rewrite all the code. We simply define a new employee class that inherits the details of the person class and then adds the additional attributes and methods that are required. In this case, person would be referred to as the superclass of employee. On the other hand, employee would be referred to as the derived class or subclass of person. The employee object can access code in the form of methods to set and get its attributes. Two from the employee class and four inherited from the person. So now let's say we want to extend the employee class one more time to create two further subclasses, one for an hourly paid employee and one for our yearly salary paid employees. Can you suggest suitable attributes and methods for these two new subclasses? Pause the video and see if you can work it out now. So notice here how each of these subclasses are still employees. And of course, employees are people. That means they'll inherit attributes and methods from all the way up the class tree. Once instantiated, an hourly paid employee will have four attributes, one from hourly paid, one inherited from employee and two from person, and eight methods, two from hourly paid, two inherited from employee, and four inherited from person. In a similar way, once instantiated, a salaried employed object will also have four attributes and eight methods. Now imagine a situation where a subclass needs a more detailed or specific version of a method that it's inherited from further up the class tree. So let's say a system outputs the name of a salaried or hourly paid employee and the name is prefixed with a capital letter and an underscore to denote which system they are on. 
capital E underscore for hourly paid and capital S underscore for salary paid. We need the get name method that's been inherited from the person class to therefore be more specific. We do this by using a method of the same name in the subclass that contains the more specific code relevant to that class. When this occurs, the method from the parent class is said to be overridden. Overriding occurs automatically when you call a method for an object that shares the same name as a method further up the class tree. The overriding method takes precedence and replaces the method from the superclass. So here we've instantiated a salaried employed object called employee fall, and we've set his name attribute to Justin. However, we still want to output the getName method inherited from its superclass. Well, we can do this by using super dot. So when using super dot, overriding is ignored and the method from the original superclass is used instead. So employee four dot super dot get name outputs Justin, whereas employee four dot get name use the overridden version s underscore Justin. Here is the original code then for the person class shown on the left. We can clearly see the two private attributes for person, name and address and the four methods for the class. We now want to create a more specific subclass of person called employee. Remember, we don't change any of the code related to the person class. We still need those attributes and methods. We only need to add the person's national insurance number and extra methods to handle this new data. We create a new class just like we did before using the keyword class followed by the name of the new class employee. We then use the keyword inherits followed by the name of the class it will be inheriting from. So in this case, person. This line of code instantiates an object from the employee class, passing in the appropriate initial values for the constructor method. In this final example, we create another subclass for a salaried employee, and we can see it inherits from the employee class, which of course itself inherits from the person class. In a similar way, this line of code instantiates or creates an object from the employee class, passing in the appropriate initial values to the constructor. Remember, if we call the getName method from the person5 object, it runs the method from the subclass because it overrides anything higher up that shares the same name. If we use super.getName instead, it will use the method from the original person class. So having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key questions. What is inheritance and how can it be used? And how can overriding be used in object-oriented programming?